Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Environmental Science Video 10. It's on natural ecosystem change. In this picture, these researchers are holding ice cores that they collected at Vostok Station in Antarctica. We can take those ice cores, melt them in the lab, and it releases this ancient atmosphere. So we could look at, for example, how carbon dioxide levels have changed over the last 450,000 years. Now that corresponds with temperature changes. So we've had periods of time where it's warmer and what are called ice ages, where it's much colder. Now the ice ages actually correspond with high dust concentrations in the ice core because during ice ages we also have these massive deserts on our planet, wind increases, and that sediment is trapped in the glaciers. And so the climate has changed and that's affected ecosystems on our planet. But what's affecting the climate? It's where the earth is in relation to the sun. And so as we've had changes in solar output, that's affected our climate. As we've had slight changes in our orbit or volcanoes or plate tectonics, all of those things have affected our climate and therefore are affecting the ecosystems. Not only the life, but also the land. At the worst level, it can cause what are called mass extinctions on our planet, where a number of species simply go away. Lots of times that's followed by adaptive radiation, where different species come back. But for the most part, what happens is species have to respond. So species will move back and forth as the climate changes. Now, it also affects the abiotic factors, so the land on our planet. And so what happens after the land is destroyed or changed is we have succession as life moves back into that area. It can be either primary or secondary. In primary succession, the soil in the community is gone. In secondary, the soil in the community actually remains. And so what's affecting our climate? It's where the Earth is in relation to the sun. And scientists have noted that the sun changes over time. So we have these sunspot, 11-year sunspot cycles, but we have these larger changes in the output of the sun over thousands of years. We also find precession in the Earth. As it spins, it also starts to wobble over thousands of years, and that causes changes in our climate. The, the pole starts to point in different directions, so we get varying amounts of light. And then we're also finding that there's precession in the orbit itself. As it moves around over thousands of years, we have changes in the amount of energy that we're getting from the sun. So all of these correspond to changes in energy from the sun. So if we look at how these models match up with the data that we're collecting in ice cores, we can see this cycling of our climate over time. We're going have these ice ages and if we look down at the northern hemisphere this is what it would be like during the worst ice age that whole area that's gray would be covered in ice that means most of Canada um, Great Britain all of Scandinavia would be covered it would move down into the US as well massive ice sheets and then we'd have times where there's not much ice at all just this dark area where Greenland is and then along the coast right here another thing that can affect climate is going to be volcanoes and so for example in 1991 in the Philippines Mount Pinatubo exploded, that increases the amount of sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere and it cools the planet. So the planet cooled over the next three years just due to this one eruption. And then we can have plate tectonics that is affecting the amount of energy we get as well. So a simple example, South America slid into North America and Panama was formed. What happened, there used to be a current that moved through here and that changed the whole current. And so that's going to affect the climate. Or at the largest level, Pangaea was all of the continents coming together. We had massive deserts forming in the middle and that's going to change species on our planet. It led to some of the worst mass extinctions on our planet where a large percent of life actually went away. Now this changed eventually as they broke apart. We had an adaptive radiation and all these dinosaur species showed up. What happened to them? We had a giant asteroid impact, mass extinction, and that led to adaptive radiation of the mammals. And some people are saying we're headed into a sixth mass extinction. And so this is the worst way that climate can affect species. Now, as the climate changes, animals can move. And so polar bears are going to be impacted. Uh, this is a distribution of prime polar bear habitat. And you can see it's being impacted all the way around the pole. Now, if polar bears don't go extinct, what are they going to do? They're going to move into new areas and they're going to exploit new niches. Plants will do the same thing. And so as the planet has gotten warmer and warmer and warmer, this is a distribution of prairie, birch, spruce, and pine trees over the last 21,000 years. And so watch what happens to their distribution. So now we're looking at 12,000 years ago, and now 6,000 years ago, 
and now present day distribution. So you can see that as the ice retreated, the plants moved into that area. Now they're not like polar bears, they can't walk. And so this is a slow transition, but the movement of seeds, the movement of pollen moves them into that area. Now as the ice moves away, what is left, it's just gonna be bare rock. And so how do we go from bare rock to life? That process is called succession. And so what happens? We have some weathering, we have some pioneer species that start to move in, then we have some grasses, then we start to have some forbs and some bushes move in. You can see the soil is starting to increase. Then we have small trees and then we have larger trees that start to move into that area. And so it takes hundreds if not thousands of years for this to occur, but you can see it taking place right here. This is a lava flow and over time soil is going to start to form and then life's going to move back into that area. This is primary succession because all that's left is the rock. We can also have secondary succession. So this is a forest one year after a forest fire came through and so you can see that some of the life is starting to come back let me show you what it looks like a year later way more of that life has come back and that's because the soil is still there and a lot of those seeds are still there and it's a natural way that this 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 forest can rebuild itself and so did you learn the following could you pause the video now and fill in the blanks so again climate is affected by the Sun's output the orbit volcanism and then plate tectonics that changes the ecosystems, both land and life. Extinctions, mass extinctions, eventually leads to adaptive radiation. And on the land, we can have succession, either primary or secondary. And I hope that was helpful.